Hello, my name is Brett Deacon, and today I'm going to show you how to set up a telescopic hydraulic system. Um, I did quite a bit of looking on YouTube to see if I could find different types of rigging tutorials and for hydraulics inside of 3ds Max, and there really isn't that much out there. There's really just the simple hydraulic system where it extends from point A to point B in a linear line. And for this character, I actually wanted them to rotate and function like they would actually twist and pivot you know you got your extensions and retractions and everything and I wanted it to look like this um, there was quite a bit of trial and error and this was the best way I could come up with doing the hydraulic system um, where you got your ball joint attached to you know your torso and everything and your lower torso here and then apart from that um, you also have an extra tube on the inside for some extra length rather than having just a system like this one here where you have you know two types of tubes and then you're very limited on how far you can extend your object um, so after figuring all this out I decided I might as well throw a bit of a tutorial up on there so if anybody else you know would like to figure out how to do something like this there's a little bit of know-how out there on the internet right now. So let's go ahead and get started on how to do this whole system. Um, I'm not gonna show you guys how to model this because it's pretty simple geometry and everything, but if you want I'll see if I can throw up the max file so you guys can just download this and get straight from working on there so you can follow along with me. Um, so we got this split up into about five parts here. We got the top link for the upper hydraulic top, and then we also have the lower link for the lower hydraulic, and then in the middle we got your hydraulic tube or the telescopic extender. Um, so let's go ahead and just pop these all right into world center here. Do that by clicking on the up and down arrow, just right click on it, and it will center it right into the world there for you. Now, when working with hydraulics and rigging them, what you have to do is you have to adjust your pivot points and get them all working properly. Because for the top and the bottom hydraulic parts, we use a look at system where it'll take wherever your pivot point is and then whenever you link it to an object, it'll look at that object based off where your pivot point is. So when working with a ball joint system for hydraulics, you got to figure out where your pivot point is going to be and usually pivot points are going to be right where they're linked right in the middle here so let's go ahead and adjust our pivots to get that all to work. I'm going to go ahead and go into the left view and then just zoom in. I'm going to go into my hierarchy tab right here and I'm going to click effect pivot only and I'm just going to take it and move my pivot point close enough or just as close as I can to this line right here. It's going to be the center line for the sphere and I'm just going to unclick that and then I'm going to go down to the bottom one here. I'm also going to click Alt-X to go into X-ray mode. And I'm going to do effect pivot only. And I'm going to take this and move this down to the same position here. Alright. Once that's all said and done, I want to take my hydraulic links. And I also want to align the pivot to be center with this one here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do effect pivot only again. And I'm going to click the align button. I'm going to align it to the bottom hydraulic system right here. And I'm going to click align position. I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. And by default it's usually set at center. So just go ahead and change it to pivot point here. And then just go ahead and click apply and OK. Then I'll move the bottom one there. Let's go ahead and do that to the top one as well. Well, that's all done. Let's go ahead and get some of the basic links together here. Go back to my perspective view. Turn the grid off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to animation. I'm going to go to constraints. And then I'm going to do a look at constraint. I'm going to do a look at constraint. And I'm going to do it right at the bottom link right here. Now, as you can see, it's going to offset it in a arbitrary position. 
So what we have to do in the PRS parameters right here, we have to go to rotation, and that's where your look at constraint is, and we need to check on keep initial offset. So that's gonna reset it back to the default position that it's already set up to. So now that we have one look at position set up, as you can see, wherever I move this bottom link here, the top hydraulic follows it and it also rotates in the right position so it looks like it's actually pivoted. So let's go ahead and do that with the top one now as well. The bottom one here, sorry. So we're going to do animation, constraints, and then we're going to do a look at constraint and we're going to do it back to the top link right here. And again it's going to put it in an arbitrary position so we just go ahead and do keep initial offset. And so now we've got the top one and the bottom one working properly. Um, one thing that, or the next thing that we want to do is we want to link this ball joint right here so that whenever I move this one, this one moves with it. So all we have to do is go to select and link. I'm going to click on this hydraulic tube right here. I'm going to link it to the top. And then I'm also going to click on the bottom one right here and link this to the bottom. So now we've got a basic working hydraulic system and this is for the most part how you rig any type of hydraulic. Now we're going to go a little bit further since we have the extra tubing in the middle and I'll show you guys how to do that right now. Um, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to go into our helpers tab which is the little tape measure right here. We're going to create a dummy object. And I'm just going to take this dummy object, I'm going to align it to the pivot point of the top hydraulic area right here. Um, it's pretty small, go ahead and scale it up there. Alright. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a position constraint on this. So I'm going to click animation, constraint, and position constraint. And I'm going to link it right to the top one here. So whenever this one moves, the dummy object follows the position of this one. The next thing that I want to do is I want to split it in between these two here. So what I'm going to do is add another position target. And what it does is it splits the weight difference or the average of 50% between both of these. So whenever I move this up, it does 50% of the distance between both of them. So we got that all set up now. The next thing that I want to do is get the tubing in the center to actually move. So what I'm going to do is hide this selection so I can see the middle tube. I'm going to do an animation, I'm going to do a constraint, and I'm also going to do a position or a position constraint and position it and link it right to this dummy object here. And then what do is I'm going to right click and click on hide all. And unhide everything here. So we've got it working about halfway now. Um, the next problem is fixing the orientation of it so it actually moves properly rather than looking straight up and down. So now that we got the basic setup here, um, I'm going to just go ahead and hide. I'm going to select this and then deselect everything but the inside tube here. And then what I'm going to do is do animation constraint and I'm going to do a link constraint to this. And after that, we've got a working telescopic hydraulic system. So, and what we could do if we wanted to get, you know, something with the working torso system like I have on that robot that I showed you guys, is I can duplicate this. Um, it's going to mess a couple of things up. I'm just going to go through and fix this really quickly so they're looking at the proper objects here. Those working. Do two more here. For some reason, sometimes you have to reset 
to look at orientations and constraints, and then sometimes you don't, I guess. Um, Max is just kind of funny like that once in a while. Uh, let's see here. So we'll create a cylinder. default material on it. And then I'm just going to hollow it out to make it tube. Bridge the gap. Get that. And my left view and we'll align everything up. So that's next to place. Gonna take these and move them on the four, just evenly space them out so there are four areas here. And then to get them to rotate and pivot properly, all that we have to do is link the U or the hydraulic connectors to the cylinder up at the top here. So I have to do that for the bottom one. And it should be all set to go. There you have it. A 360 degree rotating hydraulic system that looks pretty sweet. And it can extend out pretty far. I can also do that as well. There's just a lot of things that you can do with this that you normally can't do with just straight up normal hydraulics. So, um, yeah, I hope you guys got something out of this and enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, just leave me a comment and I'll see if I can help you out.